Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Mikey and in today's video, we're going to be doing something kind of a bit different. Now, I'm not going to be talking about anything relating to school or studying in particular, but we're kind of going to be focusing on how I organize everything when it comes to YouTube, school, my personal life and academic life, anything relating to everything. How do I organize it all and how do I keep track of everything? This video is going to be super simple, breaking up into four different parts. The first part is Notion. I'm going to take you guys through basically what I use Notion for and how I take advantage of all the features on Notion. The second thing we're going to be talking about is Alfred. Now, Alfred is a computer um, kind of like software that you can have on your Mac or on your PC, really any computer. And this really helps me in organizing my files and helps keep everything in track when it comes to school and finding any file, really. I'll explain it more later on in the video. Don't even worry about it now. The third thing is iCloud files or really any online storage system. Now, there are plenty of storage systems out there like Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, I mean, there's probably a couple more. What I like to use is iCloud files. I do use Dropbox for specific things, but for the majority of things I do, I put on iCloud files because you guys probably already know I love Apple and I'm definitely a huge Apple fanboy. The fourth thing we're going to talk about is reminders and that is really any to-do list. And I'm going to explain why later in the video, it is really, really important to have a to-do list or some type of reminders app that you are using on a daily basis. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is Notion and I'm going to take you guys over to my computer. Now, I have made two videos on on Notion already, one of them explaining how you can go from becoming a beginner in Notion to becoming a pro user. And the second one is actually using cool features in Notion. I will link them above right here. So definitely be sure to check them out after this video or right now before you watch this video. So this is how my Notion looks. And this is not going to be how your Notion looks, but I want to take you guys through how I set up my Notion to make everything very, very efficiently. So this is actually what I use for organizing all my videos. I have video database, and this is where anytime I have an idea, I throw it into this video database. And in the future, I might have a chance of making it into a video, or I might end up discarding it and deleting it. Now, if you move to the right, this is something called a database. And this is where I actually keep all of the videos I've ever published. All of them are over here. These are idle videos. So videos I filmed, but I decided I wasn't going to upload them because the quality wasn't nice. So I was like, okay, I don't want to upload a bad video for you guys. Here are the scheduled videos, the videos that I have ready to go. And all I have to do is click upload the videos that I have ready to edit and then the videos I have ready to film. And you guys can actually see that one of the videos I'm filming today is how I organize my school and personal life using Notion, Alfred and iCloud files. Now, this is just a title that I created for myself. This might not be the future title for the video. This is just something that helps me organize, you know, which video I'm going to be filming. And I actually do batch film where I do film three or four videos on any particular day, just because it does take a while to set up everything. Now, aside from YouTube, I do have, I'm also getting my private piloting license. And I also like to keep track of everything I'm doing. So my flight training log, all the flights that I've done, I've tracked them all over here. I haven't gotten a chance to fly recently just because I did break my ankle. So I haven't really gotten a chance to drive really. I've kind of just been in my room for the past month or so. But these are the ones that I finished so far and any future trainings that I do have. Then I also have my ground school progress. So there are a couple exams that I need to do and I've tracked all the units or modules, so to say on this database. And I've checked off the ones that I finished. So I have passed my medical exam, my radio exam, and I do have my P-STAR exam next week. So hopefully that one goes well, fingers crossed. Then I also have a flight training exam and that is all over here. And I've studied for some of them. These are like some trainings that you do while you are actually flying. Um, I do still have a long way to go. So hopefully they all go well. Now, aside from that, I am learning coding on my free time. So if you guys see, have seen any of my previous videos, you know, I'm actually not in school right now and I'm actually learning coding while also taking on private piloting license while also doing research in the gastroenterology division in St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto. But for coding, I like organizing everything I learned so far over here so that in the future, if I ever do need to use them again, I don't need to go back to my class content. I can simply come in over here and these are all the notes that I've created and the things that I've learned so far in coding. Now, I also have random notes that I've made. So sometimes I get an idea for something and I don't want to forget it or and I want to write it down somewhere where it is very organized. And that is where I've created these random notes. These are a bunch of various different random notes not relating to one another. Like, for example, uh, let's do countries I've been to. These are all the countries I've been to. Maybe we want to do a boat licensing exam. So I got my boat license recently. So I wrote down a bunch of notes over here while I was getting my boating license. Uh, maybe it's uh, school packing. So things that I do when I go to school and I want to pack things, I put it all over here so I don't forget about it. Uh, there's a bunch of random notes over here. I created an online website. Uh, so here was like notes that I did while I was creating the website. 
Uh, it, it's really a bunch of random tasks that I've done and I just like organizing it all into Notion. Again, if you want to see a more detailed video, definitely check out one of my old Notion videos. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is Alfred. Now, Alfred is kind of like a searching software that you can use for your computer. And there's a couple ways you can activate it. The way that I like to activate it is I press shift twice and then Alfred activates right here. You guys can see it here on the window. And let's say I want to find any file on my computer. Now, you guys might be thinking to yourself, well, you could probably just use Spotlight for that, which is a Spotlight search. However, sometimes with a Spotlight search, things get buggy. Like, let's say I want to find something from first year, a course that I took called SCCOM um, 100. Okay, so I can't really find anything. All I see is a note and two web searches. However, if I use Alfred, SCCOM 100, that was a science communication 100, I could find all the files for it right here and it can even bring open that file for me when I click on it. There's a bunch of other cool things Alfred can do that Spotlight can. For example, let's say I wanted to find the clipboard of everything that I've copied in the past six months. All I have to do is option C and automatically everything that I've copied in the past six months is over here and I could access it all separately, load more and I just keep going, I keep going nonstop and I could literally find everything, which is why I really like Alfred because it's not just a searching software. Now, Alfred also has a lot of other cool features like something called shortcuts. Now with shortcuts or workflows through Alfred, let me actually open it up for you. So one of the things that I like doing is creating workflows. An example of a workflow that I've created is if I press option N, it's automatically going to open a new Safari window for me right away. And I've created that so that I could finish my task quicker and I don't have to keep click clicking on the Safari thing. Now you might be asking yourself, well, Michael, that's super simple. You don't really need a task for that. However, when you've created so many different types of tasks like option N or like another one that I have where I do open in Chrome, this opens my Safari window automatically in Chrome. So you can see Google opened up right away. Now there's also another one that I like to use on Alfred, which is where again, I toggle Alfred and let's say I wanted to find an IMDB rating for a movie. Let's do one. Let's do Avengers. Okay. I'm going to do M O V to search movies. We're going to do Avengers searching movies. Let's do Avengers Infinity War. And again, if you guys know me, I only watch things above a seven out of 10 on IMDB. So you can see over here, oh, I already know Avengers Infinity War is at 8.4. And if I even want, I can open the IMDB site for it right here and I could check it all out. Now, these are a bunch of cool workflows that you can do with Alfred. And Alfred itself has its own online database of workflows that you could search online for. As you guys can see over here, I have a bunch of workflows for Alfred like audio switch, if I'm using different types of audio, I can automatically switch the output device for it. I can automatically switch the input device as well, whatever I want it to be. There are a bunch of cool workflows that I could do with it. If you guys wanna see a dedicated video for Alfred and going in depth on all these workflows and different things you could do with it, definitely comment down below and let me know and I'd be happy to make a video on it. Now, the next thing we're gonna be talking about is iCloud files. Now, the reason why I like iCloud files much better than Google Drive or Dropbox is primarily because it is very syncable between all your devices, particularly myself, because I have a lot of different Apple devices like an iPad, an iPhone, a Mac, an Apple Watch. I have the whole Apple ecosystem, as all the tech YouTubers would say. With iCloud Drive, the good thing about it is that anytime you do anything on your desktop, your computer desktop, you can automatically sync it with iCloud Drive. What I've actually done is I've actually put my desktop folder in iCloud Drive. So at any point, if I ever take a screenshot while I'm on my computer, this screenshot is going to save to my desktop. And then if I go to my desktop over here and I go to my recents, you can see the screenshot again over here and I can access this on my phone on my computer, on my iPad, I can access it on everything. Now, the good thing about this is that you can actually transfer any folder into iCloud Drive. So I have my medical school application stuff. I have my piloting stuff. I have uh, my summer research that I did when I was younger. I have space wallpapers, all the wallpapers I use on my computer. I have the my Mexico trip that I do with my friends. I have church stuff. I have my all my Waterloo courses and things that I did in third year, all the classes that I've had, every single thing I've put on iCloud Drive to make sure that I could access it between all my devices. 
So if I forgot my laptop at home or my iPad at home or my iPhone, it doesn't matter. I can access every single thing on iCloud Drive. So the final thing we're going to talk about is reminders. Now, the reason why I personally like the reminders app, and I've actually had this discussion with some of my friends, is that reminders is very, again, easily syncable between all your Apple devices and computers. And at the same time, the good thing about the reminders app is that it actually shows up in the top of your notifications. So with any other reminders app, those reminders will move down in your notifications as you get new notifications. However, with the reminders app, since it's made by Apple, and integrated in the Apple ecosystem, it's already going to be at the top of your notifications no matter if you get new notifications. And that's why I personally like them. And another reason is because it's incorporated with Siri. Like a lot of times, my friends will probably see me, I'll be like, hey Siri, remind me tomorrow at 9 a.m. to take out the trash. And I'll do this because it's much quicker to do it on Siri than to write it all out. With a bunch of other apps, you don't have this option, so it does waste a couple of seconds here and there. But if you're adding, like, let's say 10 reminders a day, you've wasted like three, four minutes of your day by just adding reminders into your phone. But with the reminders app, you don't have to worry about this. And that is basically it for this video. Now, this video is kind of short and sweet. If you do want to hear more about either Notion, iCloud Files, Alfred, or Reminders, definitely let me know down below in the comments, and I would be more than happy to make a video on it explaining everything and explaining how you could take advantage of it. Again, don't forget to watch my Notion videos if you want to learn more about Notion. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys so much for watching it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care and take it easy.